a pause on race-based scholarships, the recent move by the university, and why. And you don't have to have the luck of the Irish to ride with Ziggy Zooms. More on the BG riding service that's your lucky charm this St. Paddy's Day. And the clock is going tick-tock for tick-tock. The app's future and Falcon reaction and why the U.S. may be planning the platform. Live from the campus of Bowling Green State University. We start out today with a severe weather alert. Hello and welcome into BG Weekly on BG24. I'm Laura Sandlin. And I'm Blake Pierce. We've already seen some hail today in Bowling Green. And that severe weather alert includes the possibility of heavy thunderstorms, high winds, and even the chance for tornadoes. The next wave coming just two weeks after major storms rolled through the Dayton area, leaving behind some massive damage to the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. You can see in the pictures here, the damaged hangar, planes, and other scattered debris. The National Weather Service says that February 28th storm produced two tornadoes. Let's go ahead and fast forward and now bring in BG24's Aaron May. Aaron, what exactly are we looking at with the severe weather alert and how common are tornadoes this time of year? Yeah, Laura, I'm kind of surprised by the amount of tornadoes that we've had so far this year. The average, I just looked at the National Weather Service minutes ago, Ohio usually only gets one tornado per March. We've already well surpassed that and there's definitely a chance that we could surpass that again. We're going to see thunderstorms later on today. We've already had inch, excuse me, uh, we've already had pea-sized hail today and over an inch of rain in some areas. And we're going to be seeing more, I believe, as we go into the later evening hours. Uh, we're going to have about a high of 66 degrees, low of 45, and it's already pretty breezy, but I believe that these storms will be even more breezy. We're going to have a look now at the Storm Prediction Center's map that they put out about every three or four hours. And this will show us really the risks that we are seeing throughout the day. Um, behind me, we will have the map. Here we are. We're right here, right below the slight risk. That's level two out of five. We're about a one out of five. So there's definitely a chance that we could see a tornado or two. We could get about one inch in diameter hail. We could have wind gusts over 60 miles per hour. I will be tracking these thunderstorms as they make their way through the area. Uh, follow me at Aaron May BG24. I believe the further south you go down 75, the more high risk you'll be to see severe weather. Now looking ahead into tomorrow, we are going to be seeing a bit of a cool down as we have a front go through, be cloudy, a uh, high of 50, low of 38, and it's still going to be fairly breezy. We're going to have a look ahead now into the rest of the week, and we're going to be seeing those temperatures start to warm back up, and we're even going to see some sun once you get back on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we're going to have a pretty chilly day on Monday. But if you take away anything from this, it's to make sure that you're listening to the watches and warnings because if the atmosphere gets itself ready to go after earlier storms, we will start seeing thunderstorms start popping up and some might be severe with all severe modes being a possibility. So Laura, make sure that you're paying attention to those watches and warnings. Thank you, Aaron. I will be sure to keep an eye on those ongoing watches and warnings as things kind of sound a bit intense. And Rainbow Threads Clothing Drive is returning to BGSU. The Office of Multicultural Affairs is hosting the event Monday, March 18th through Friday, March 22nd. The Clothing Drive focuses on providing gender-affirming clothing to BGSU students at no cost. Students can meet with a stylist from Rainbow Threads to pick out items that best reflect who they are. Amanda, Amanda Panning Agua, Assistant Director for Belonging and Engagement at BGSU, says Rainbow Threads gives students the opportunity to express themselves without any judgment or financial stress. People deserve to be validated on our campus. They deserve to feel the, like their most authentic selves. And if we can have a part in that, I mean, I think that's great. It's also, you know, it's, it's accessible to folks who maybe don't have the financial um, wherewithal or the resources to maybe begin their journey. Paniagua also says the drive is open to anyone. The Office of Multicultural Affairs will continue to accept donations through March 14th at 5 p.m.
And kind of switching gears, colleges and universities across the state, including BGSU, are taking a look at their scholarship policies. This comes as an Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost emphasized race-based scholarship awards are unconstitutional. Last summer, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Harvard and UNC violated the 14th Amendment by factoring race into applications. Now, Ohio universities are having to take a closer look at their policies, putting many scholarships on hold. ABGSU spokesperson tells Falcon Media the university is reviewing their scholarship criteria to ensure that it is compliant with the law and has paused awarding race-based scholarships while they evaluate the next steps. Now to a follow up on a story. The Stonefolds estate has just over two weeks left to submit the final details for damages discussed in a February 29th hearing. Stonefolds was a student at BGSU when he died, where, where he died during a hazing incident in March 2021. The Fultz family is now seeking just over $225 million in damages, a number their legal team says they hope makes a loud and clear statement against hazing. These damages are against the final defendant in the case, Daylin Dunson, who is the president of the fraternity known as Pi Kappa Alpha, or Pike, at the time of Fultz's death in 2021. $33.8 million is for Fultz's conscious pain and suffering. The legal team says this equates to $1 million for every ounce of bourbon Fultz was forced to drink that night. An additional $54 million falls into the wrongful death category, where $1 million represents every year Fultz's life was cut short. And finally, $137.5 million are being demanded in punitive damages. This comes down to $25,000 for every Greek chapter in the United States. The family's lawyer, Sean Alto, spoke to BG Falcon Media after the hearing. I sure like to think so. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time. We've got uh, working with other families who have lost their, their loved ones uh, to hazing or their sons or daughters have been injured. I'd like to think that our efforts, uh, not just in litigation, but also efforts to change laws and help universities understand the risk uh, that they're facing, as well as the, the national and local chapters. Also facing a slew of charges for Fultz's death, including reckless homicide, tampering of evidence, and seven counts of hazing. Do you have what it takes to walk just over 18 and a half miles with a pack that weighs less than 20 er, with a pack that weighs 25 pounds on your back? This Saturday, around 130 people will be attempting just that at the Rangers Club's second annual Norwegian Foot March. The Norwegian Foot March started in 1915 as a military endurance test for soldiers in the Norwegian Army. Now, the test is used for optional Norwegian soldiers, but has gained popularity around the world, especially in the U.S. This year, participants in BG's March will represent 12 different Ohio Army Reserve and National Guard units. The first group will head out at 7 a.m. and the second group following at 7.30 at the Slippery Elm Trail. And it's once again time for a TED Talk. Falcon Media's Claire Mitchell and Steve Iwanek are emceeing the annual TEDx BGSU next Thursday in the Bowen Thompson Student Union. It runs from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Organizers say the talk series seeks to amplify the voices of students, faculty, staff, and the community members. The event is also a place for participants to share new ideas that inspire change and foster, quote, ideas worth spreading. This year's theme is once again for the public good. The event is from 11 to 6 in the Student Union. And March is Women's History Month and BGSU is celebrating with its fourth annual Young Women in Leadership Conference. The conference aims to open the door for young women of all majors at BGSU to be able to invest in themselves and learn from other female leaders. The event features a leadership program as well as a discussion panel and scholarships. The WYL says it wants to provide a space for young women to find and make connections. Conference is about learning and then also being more vulnerable about yourself and it's a way to also connect with your peers because sometimes especially with social media you feel very alone but this conference has allowed all the women to come together and support one another. The program says it plans to continue growing and influencing young women and hopes participants can walk away with more confidence and their heads held high. And St. Patrick's Day is just around the corner. 
meaning popular drinks like green beer and Irish car bombs will be flowing through downtown BG. One local business wants to remind you not to drink and drive, and that Ziggy Zooms has got your ride. Since the Ziggy Zooms team is prepared to be your lucky charm this St. Patrick's weekend by providing safe and affordable rides. Ziggy Zooms has extended their hours this weekend to make sure they are available to provide safe rides for the community. Ziggy Zooms also uses Call of the Canyon to house their Canyon Express business, which provides free water and late night food. Cam Park is the president and CEO of Ziggy Zooms, and he says they are ready to come out and support the safety of the BG community this weekend. Ziggy Zooms was founded with the mission to eradicate OVIs in the city of Bowling Green. And I think we're doing a great job. And that's exactly what we're going to do this St. Patrick's Day. So we're going out um, with the full force of our team um, in an effort just to make this city a little bit safer. Matt Gerlich is a BGSU graduate who has used Ziggy Zooms many times. They always pick up the calls no matter what. And even if the lines are busy with dispatching, then they get you a call back immediately as soon as they can. I've never been declined a ride at all for pickup or drop off. I would say it's just all around and a great service. Matt says it is a service that students and community members should take full advantage of. It's great, very reliable. I would recommend it to everyone and I always do. Even like I had my girlfriend's parents come into town and we use Ziggy Zooms with them too as well. Ziggy Zooms will be open Thursday through Saturday from 9 p.m. until 3 a.m. They will also be available Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. The cost is $5 per person and you can pay by credit card, Venmo, Cash App, or Cash. We don't want you to get behind the wheel and have an accident. That's the last thing that we want to happen um, is either get someone injured or, you know, incur some kind of crazy expense. Nobody needs a record. Nobody needs to incur any expenses when you have this service here take full advantage of it. We're gonna be out there, give us a call. Don't test your luck this St. Patrick's weekend. You can book a ride with Ziggy Zooms by calling at 419-484-4417. Reporting for BG24, I'm Megan Stibley. How would you feel if you didn't have the popular app TikTok anymore? It's a thought that could become a reality for many Americans. After the US House passed a bill Wednesday that could potentially ban the app nationwide. Officials say if the bill becomes a law, TikTok's Chinese parent company, ByteDance, would have to sell the platform or base a nationwide ban. Their platform has faced several rounds of government criticism since its birth in 2016, particularly due to fears from officials that the Chinese government would be able to use data from the app and to spread misinformation. Here's what some students have to say about the looming ban because I've learned a bunch of stuff from TikTok that I just would have never learned, so I don't never really know what I'd do without it, to be completely honest. I think that there's definitely worse things that are bigger issues to be worried about today, um, but at the same time, it does give a lot of people a platform to talk about issues. According to CNN, the House vote was 352 yeses and 65 noes. The bill is now off to the Senate to be reviewed. And BGSU's Graduate Student Senate is hoping to raise both funds and awareness about the ongoing occupation of Gaza through a discussion panel and documentary viewing. GSS held a screening of the 2016 film Occupation of the American Mind, which is about the geopolitical interests of the U.S. in Palestine, where the Gaza Strip is located. After the screening, there was a panel of guest speakers who highlighted the history of Gaza and what needs to be done in order to see change in the state. Ben Arthur Thomason, PhD candidate and BGSU graduate assistant, says people need to be made aware about what is going on overseas so that those changes can be made. What I want people to do and to, to realize that and to respond with, we need to start leading each other. We need to start getting ourselves organized. We need to start getting active in our communities getting to know people in our communities, um, realize ourselves what the issues are. Thompson also says GSS plans to host more events in the future to continue raising awareness and hopes there will be more will support. 
Coming up in sports, BGSU hockey is now without a head coach. The athletic department says that it was time to part ways with Ty Eigner, who has coached the hockey team since 2019. Plus, a key women's basketball player is sidelined for the second time in her career. How one fall led to a lengthy battle instead of a senior season on the court. BG24 Sports is brought to you by the Falcon Media Sports Network. Hello everyone, I'm Benjamin Korak. A senior and guard on the BG women's basketball team suffered a season-ending injury back in December. This is the second season of Lexi Fleming's career where she has injured her knee, this time sidelining her for the remainder of her senior season. FMSN's Lucas Kleimeyer sat down with Fleming and head coach Fred Schmiel to discuss her injury and how it felt to miss yet another season. Me. On December 22, 2023, BGSU women's basketball senior guard Lexi Fleming suffered a major knee injury against Indiana, causing her senior season to end earlier than expected. I was driving down the lane left hand and she cut me off, so I was just planning on doing a jump stop um, and going over her, but when I just did a jump stop, uh, the knee went and didn't want to stay. The scene took everyone in the arena by surprise, but Fleming remembers the immediate support of her teammates and the opposing fans. I just remember hitting the ground and everyone like gasping uh, at Indiana. So it was a lot, but uh, the Indiana fans were really great. My teammates were really great just coming up to me, um, making sure I was okay. Unfortunately for Fleming, this is the second time she has suffered a significant knee injury in her collegiate career, following a season ending torn ACL prior to her sophomore season. But fortunately for Lexi, the mental and physical recovery process for her recent injury has not been no. unfamiliar territory. With your first one, it's your first one, so you don't know what you're doing um, completely. You want to obviously get your knee back to where it was, but the second time around, you've already been through it a first time. So um, it makes it a lot easier. It makes a lot, the process a lot smoother. You know what it takes to go through it. Um, I always tell everyone, I already know how strong my other knee is at when staying up, so I just got to do the same thing again. Um, just with the second knee. So I think the recovery process is just, it's a long process, but it takes hard work, but I've already gotten hard work to get here, so you just gotta keep going. With Fleming being one of the most experienced players on the team, the younger players have looked up to her as a leader. First year head coach Fred Shamil has relied on Fleming's veteran presence to help guide the younger members of the team. She's a very experienced player. She's been through good times, bad times, and, and can kind of be the tour guide for those younger players and, and guide them through you know, the bumpiest of roads and, and even in the good moments, how to handle success. Though Fleming isn't able to compete on the court alongside her teammates, her contributions off the court have not gone unnoticed. Yeah, I mean, she's, she, she is a, a coach. She's got great energy, first of all. I mean, always brings energy, has high expectations for her teammates. Um, she's, you know, she's coaching them through certain situations. She, she knows me pretty well, so she's got an idea of what I'm looking for, and she can phase that message to the team and, and her teammates, uh, especially the younger group. With both her basketball and personal goals. Because of her injuries, Fleming has two years of eligibility remaining and is expected to come back for another season of Falcon basketball. Turning over to hockey, five-year head coach Ty Eigner has been relieved of his duties with the BG Hockey Program. A BG Hockey alumni, Eigner was hired for the 2019 hockey season. That season, the team went 21-13-4. Since then, the Falcons have declined in wins every season. This season, they went 13-22-1. Playoffs contributed to Eigner's release as he is 1-8 for eight in his last three playoff series, losing all eight games by a margin of 25 goals to 14. Eigner was dismissed on Monday, March 11th, after losing a two-game playoff series to on Saturday to Michigan Tech. Director of Athletics Derek Vandermeer says that the search for a new hockey head coach will begin immediately. And more bad news in the BG sports world as women's basketball team has lost their first and only playoff game this season. In the MAC tournament quarterfinal on Wednesday, four-seed Buffalo sent five-seed Bowling Green home early in a 70-64 BG loss. 
Lady Falcons' Amy Velasco and Paige Kohler each scored 19 points, despite going only 3 for 15 from three-point range. Buffalo guard Chelia Watson led both teams with 24 points, a major contribution to Buffalo's advance to the semifinals. The Buffaloes tip off against Toledo in the MAC tournament semifinal game at 10 a.m. on Friday in Cleveland. BG men's basketball just won their first playoff game against Central Michigan, 66-56. to They now move on to play Kent State tomorrow at 5 p.m., also in Cleveland. Up next in the community corner, we sit down with Jeff Klein, director of the Wood County Emergency Management Agency, to talk all things solar eclipse. All eyes will be on the sky in about three and a half weeks because of a rare total solar eclipse. But what does that mean for the BG community? Welcome to Community Corner where we talk about interesting topics with people in the BG community. I'm Sierra Geronimo. Bowling Green is prepping for the eclipse on Monday, April 8th. What is a total solar eclipse? It is where the moon passes between the earth and the sun, bathing a portion of the earth in darkness. Today we are talking to the Wood County Emergency Management Agency Director, Jeff Klein, to tell us more about the eclipse and how we should prepare for this event. Thank you for coming, Jeff. Oh, for thank you. It's, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So why is a total solar eclipse in BG so special? Well, one of the first things is, is it's very rare. I mean, this Ohio hasn't really had a total, total solar eclipse and since 1806. And, you know, it's one of those things that is kind of a natural phenomenon that people have heard about, but they really haven't had a chance to see it. And now we have a chance to see it, not just in our area, but in our own backyard. And I, a lot of people, I, th I think, see this as a great opportunity to see something, you know, as I say, that just nobody has really ever seen before in this area. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, the last time, like, the last time that this happened, I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah, it, so it, it, we have not, since any of us that are watching have been alive, have had anything like this. You know, we've had yeah. to go other places, and we just had the one in 2017 in Kentucky. And I think that's going to bring a lot of interest to this um, event because a lot of people went and saw it. And I know in our travels, we've talked to a lot of people that said, wow, it was just such a cool thing and so hard to explain and breathtaking and life changing and all that. So I think that's gonna help bring more people into the city. And I think that's one of the things that we kind of have to be cognizant of because it's gonna change our lifestyle for a couple days with all these people. Yeah, absolutely. And so many are coming to the city, but the weather is going to play a major role in the eclipse turnout in BG. So can you tell us some more about that? You know, statistically, the weather on April 8th is a low of 30, high of 50, low percent chance of rain, but 60 to 75 percent chance of clouds in the sky. Doesn't mean that it's going to be totally cloudy, but the clouds. And that is one of the big challenges that we have trying to identify how many people we're really going to get because if we don't have good weather and people may decide to go to a different area so we may not get near as many people but if we have nice weather we're going to get a lot of people they're going to come in and see it in wood county especially and i think bowling green has a lot of good viewing uh, locations for people to go to a lot of good parking lots you've got restaurants you've got things that you know give people something to do um, before the eclipse so i i do anticipate that day uh, is going to be a busy day around Bowling Green. Yeah, and is there like any possible way that we're going to know or people are going to know what the weather is going to be like leading up to that? Well, two weeks before this, we're going to get some information from the National Weather Service. It's going to be a little bit more involved than your typical two-week forecast. And kind of the things we're looking for is above average temperatures, below average, um, above below average rain, that type of thing. Because that'll kind of give us an idea, is it gonna be warm and sunny? Is it gonna be cold and cold and sunny? Is it gonna be, you know, hot and rainy? 
Um, and then about a week before, we'll have a much better idea what the weather will be, but realistically, it's probably gonna be about three days before um, we'll have a really good idea of what that weather is gonna be. And so what can we expect to see like around town if it is nice weather and we have a whole bunch of people? Well, the big thing, when we've talked to a lot of people from 2017, one of the things that everybody talked about was the number of people and the traffic problems and getting around and some of those things. And it's kind of interesting when they started looking at how many people could potentially be coming um, to our area, they started doing some traffic modeling. And one of the things that they found was that the roads that we have around here, because we've got Route 25 next to I-75, yeah. can handle a lot of extra traffic. So a lot of the interstate traffic problems that they had in 2017, we probably aren't gonna have, but what that means is the people that are getting stuck on 75 that are getting off are coming into Bowling Green. And I think when you look at Wooster, Wooster is just inviting for people to get off. As I say, you've got restaurants, you've got gas stations, you've got things that people wanna see. And the problem, I think, one of the big challenges is gonna be is when you get off and you look to the north, you see the university, you know, see the Stroh Center, football stadium, things like that. When you look to the south, look, look to the left, um, you see restaurants and trying to figure out where do I want to go and then you've got the new roundabout that people have to try and navigate it. People, I think traffic is going to be backed up, it's going to be a little bit slower because people are coming into the area trying to figure out where they want to go, what, you know, what they want to do. So I think Wooster Avenue is really going to be kind of one of the big highlight uh, areas um, where you have the traffic and probably Main Street, Route 25 yeah. uh, through downtown Bowling Green. One thing I would like to say, just kind of to caution everybody, I'm kind of concerned with your crosswalks, um, especially the ones with the flashing lights. Yeah. Um, on my way <laughs> here today, I saw some individuals didn't understand what those were for. And I would really caution people um, on the 8th and a few days before and even afterwards, we're getting a lot of people that don't understand those crosswalks. Please don't just step out in the street when they're like, when you get the cross, you know, yeah. it's okay to cross. Make sure that the traffic is stopped because it's interesting, but I don't think a lot of out of town people really understand what the f red lights mean, the flashing lights, and that. So just, just be extra careful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now the community has concerns about the amount of people, uh, specifically with uh, emergency services. Are there any plans put into place um, to talk about that or? about any road closures, like this, you said, Wooster Street mm -hmm. is going to be... Yep, the city of Bowling Green um, has been very proactive and they've actually, we've been working with them for well over a year now um, to get some different things done. They have identified some streets that they believe um, would be great for emergency lanes, things like that. They're going to have pre-placed uh, barricades, so if certain areas get busy, uh, they'll be able to shut some of those roads down. One of the things that we're looking at on our end is, um, one of the things that we found recently is people are really following Google and Waze in your phone mapping programs and it's not necessarily sending people where we want them to go or yeah. what's the best road for them to go on because you know it's a program, it doesn't really know this road has got parking on one side or what have you. So we are gonna kind of work with the city of Bowling Green to potentially close some certain roads on the maps to keep people off of those. So we're gonna try and do a couple different things to keep those emergency lanes open. Everybody should be rest assured that uh, the fire departments, police departments, law enforcement, everybody's prepared. This is not gonna be a surprise the day that this happens. They've, they've got their plans in place. Uh, not to necessarily worry about that, but one of the things is, is you know, um, to call 911, you know, it's still gonna work. We, if we have a lot of people, it may take a little bit longer for them to get to you. If somebody is in a crowded area, um, say, if you could have people out there that could help direct uh, the first responders into where the problem's at, that would be very helpful for them. I used to be on a fire department myself and there's nothing like pulling up to a crowd of 300 people knowing yeah. somebody called you <laughs> and everybody's looking at you and nobody's like really pointing that person out. So that would be one of the things that I think the public could probably really help with yeah, on that. Yeah, absolutely. And just kind of go off you like especially like with very crowded areas what do you suggest like people do like in case there is an emergency situation but you're stuck in this huge crowd of people you know the thing is is first responders deal with that all the time yeah. I mean you we, we deal with things where there's you know a whole group of people 
the first thing is, is try and keep your calm. Try not to, you know, cause any more is issues than there already are. Um, if there's somebody there that can help them, let that person help them. Like I say, one of the biggest things people don't realize is when you pull up and you see a sea of people, it really sometimes hard to see the emergency. So having people that can kind of direct you, say, hey, go here, and if it's a long distance, they have to go, maybe you have three or four people. Hey, go to the person wearing, you know, the red hat, go to the person wearing the green hat, go to the, you know, things like that, um, I think would be very helpful um, for them. And kind of have an idea if you do have to call 911, a lot of times if you're in an area you're not familiar with, um, it, it's kind of hard to give like street names, things like that. But a lot of times if you say, you know what, I see the Stroh Center, that tells them right where you're at. That we're within a, you know, a really close spot to that. And it just kind of helps get them there that much quicker. Because in an emergency, if you've ever had to call for 911 or call for help or something like that, it just seems like it takes forever. And even first responders, when we've had to call for extra people to come, it just seems like it takes yeah. forever for them to get there. <laughs> they don't get here quick enough. So we understand what that's like. Yeah, absolutely. And then another safety concern is the use of eclipse glasses, which yes, have we have a pair of eclipse right glasses. And one of the things that was interesting in 2017 was they had 16,000 eye injuries wow. because of that. And one of the things that's it's weird, but it's like it hurts your eyes to look at the sun, but you don't really necessarily realize the damage is being done. And the problem is, is in a few days when your eyes don't get better, or they really do start hurting, and you go to the doctor. It's, it, it's damage has been done and there's nothing anybody can do to fix it. So you're going to live with that for the rest of your life. So it's very important that people take care in doing that. Um, there's a lot of different glasses that are out there, um, but one of the ones that you really want to make sure is it's got an ISO rating on it. And it's in the, it should be on the, on the side here. Um, the ISO rating everybody's looking for is one, two, three, one, two. Um, that is the key to it. Make sure that it's got and that ISO rating. We're finding out that there are groups that are giving out glasses, and I hate to say that you would think they would be reputable. You would hate to say, I think I can trust them, but they don't have that yeah. ISO rating on. And another thing that we're hearing is people are saying, well, you know what, I can wear my welding glasses. It's a different type of light. And to me, it's, it's a scientific thing. It kind of seems yeah. strange. It seems like <laughs> it's dark enough, but it's really not. And you know, it's just not worth permanently damaging your eyes when you can get these things for two dollars. And in most places, a lot of places, you can get them for free. So take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Jeff, and thank you so much for joining us in the community corner. For more information about the eclipse in Bo Bowling Green, you can visit bgohio.org. Thanks for joining us in the community corner. Stay tuned after the break for an excellent Easter event. Welcome back in. Okay, Blake, I have been thinking about this all day and I just have one pressing question for you. How do you like your eggs? Ooh, well, I prefer them poached with some hollandaise sauce on a bed of English muffins oh. usually. Ooh, But very tasty. however you like your eggs, the city of BG is hosting an adult egg scramble. That's right. The After Dark Egg Hunt has all of the fun of your traditional Easter egg hunt. However, the eggs will be stuffed with cash, candy, raffle tickets, and prizes from local businesses. The scramble is at 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, April 6th at the BG Community Center. You must be 18 to register for the event, and you have to be able to sign up before April 6th. You can register online or at the BG Community Center. All right, well, thanks for watching BG24. Follow us for the latest news on social media at BG24 or online at bgfalconmedia.com. We'll be back next week with updates from around Bowling Green and Wood County. We'll see you then.